Another Friday night, another special dinner to celebrate Carter's homecoming. I sighed as I put the final touches on the table setting. Dean had asked me to prepare Carter's favorite meal to welcome him back from his first year of college. Despite my reservations, I wanted to make a good impression and start on the right foot. The front door opened and Carter strolled in nonchalantly. Hey, he muttered with a slight nod before brushing past me into the living room. Carter, you're home. Dean greeted him warmly, pulling him into a hug. How was the drive? Long, Carter shrugged, glancing around dismissively. Smells like someone's been cooking up a storm. I forced a smile. I made your favorite, pot roast with garlic mashed potatoes. Thought we could have a nice family dinner to celebrate you being back. Carter scoffed. Seriously? I've been looking forward to freedom from this sort of thing all year. He flopped onto the couch and grabbed the TV remote. Dean frowned slightly. Carter, your stepmom went to a lot of effort here. The least you could do is join us for dinner. Like I said, I'm free now. No more obligatory family crap. Carter didn't even look up from flipping channels. Disappointment and humiliation washed over me, but I refused to cause a scene on Carter's first night back. It's no problem, really. I'll just leave you two to catch up. I hurried to the kitchen, fighting back tears. So much for trying to build bridges with my stepson. After a year apart, I'd hoped Carter might meet me halfway, but his cold reception made it clear nothing had changed. As I scraped the ruined dinner into the trash, I wondered just how long I could keep playing happy family. Over the following weeks, cracks began to show in our familial facade. Whenever Dean was at work, Carter made sure to subtly undermine me at every turn. He'd leave messes around the house, claiming he'd forgotten whose job it was to clean up after him. Snide remarks about my cooking skills became routine, even though he'd once raved about my meals. One afternoon, Dean got home early to find me frantically searching the den. What's going on? he asked with concern. Before I could explain, Carter sauntered in with a smirk. Sorry, forgot to mention, I saw Jenna rummaging through your office earlier. Seemed pretty suspicious. Dean turned to me, his expression a mix of confusion and disappointment. Jenna? Were you going through my things? No, of course not, I protested, shooting Carter a glare. I was just looking for my necklace. It's gone missing. Carter shrugged innocently. Maybe you should be more careful with your stuff. An uneasy silence fell over the room. Dean rubbed the back of his neck awkwardly. Well, I'm sure it'll turn up. Just try to be a bit more organized, okay, honey? My mouth hung open in disbelief as Carter slipped away, a triumphant grin plastered across his face. He knew exactly what he was doing, planting seeds of doubt to drive a wedge between Dean and me. The incidents continued, each one chipping away at my credibility bit by bit. A missing set of car keys somehow ended up in my purse. A kitchen knife disappeared only to reappear tucked under the couch cushions. No matter how much I denied any involvement, Carter's well-timed observations made me seem careless at best, deceitful at worst. Dean tried to stay impartial but I could see the strain it put on him. As much as he wanted to trust his wife, his son's steady stream of accusations made him second-guess everything. The man I'd fallen in love with, kind, caring, always willing to hear me out, started to pull away imperceptibly. Some nights I'd lie awake, Carter's chuckle echoing in my mind as I replayed the latest incident. Tears stung my eyes at the realization that my stepson was slowly poisoning my relationship with Dean, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. At least not yet. Carter's vendetta against me only escalated as the summer trudged on. He became more brazen, ramping up the disrespect whenever Dean had to work late. I did my best to bite my tongue, not wanting to come across as the nagging stepmother constantly complaining about her stepson. One afternoon, Dean was out running errands when Carter barged into the living room trailing a thick plume of pungent smoke. Carter, are you smoking in the house? I coughed, waving the haze away. He blew a cloud of smoke in my direction defiantly. So what if I am? You know the rules. No smoking inside, especially not your father's cigars. I gestured to the expensive Cuban cigar smoldering between his fingers. Carter sneered. Dad's too busy working his ass off to enjoy them anyway. Might as well get some use out of the things. Anger burned in my chest, but I forced myself to remain calm. Put it out right now, or I'll tell your father myself. 
In response, Carter defiantly took another long drag, then strutted down the hallway, leaving an acrid trail in his wake. I spent the next hour trying to air out the house before Dean got home. A few days later, the campus dean called to notify us that Carter had been suspended for the upcoming semester due to conduct violations. Dean was beside himself, demanding an explanation from his son. Carter simply shrugged it off. Bunch of bees charges. Doesn't matter. I'll just take some time off and re-enroll later. While Dean ranted about wasted potential, I pulled Carter aside. How could you jeopardize your education like that? Don't you care at all about your future? He laughed coldly. Save the self-righteous mom routine for someone who actually cares what you think. In that moment, I lost my temper, raising my voice for the first time. You arrogant, ungrateful little... Everything okay over here? Dean interrupted, clearly concerned by our heated exchange. I swallowed hard, my face flushed. It's... it's fine. I lied through gritted teeth. Carter just smirked triumphantly. I realized then I had two choices. Confront Carter and risk driving a wedge between Dean and his only child, or stay silent in hopes the brat would eventually grow up. I opted for the latter, at least for the time being. Carter's destructive behavior reached a climax a few weeks later when he decided to throw an unauthorized party at our house. Dean was out of town on business, leaving me to deal with the entitled brat. Around 10 p.m., cars began lining the street outside. Thumping bass shook the windows as groups of rowdy college kids streamed in carrying cases of beer. I stormed into the living room to find Carter in the midst of the chaos. What is going on here? I shouted over the music. You can't just throw a party without asking. Carter laughed derisively. Last I checked, I still live here. I'll do whatever I want. Not under my roof. I reached for the stereo to shut off the ear-splitting music, but a drunk partygoer shoved me away. Hey, back off, lady, he slurred. Hands trembling with rage, I dialed Dean's number. Voicemail. I left an urgent message pleading for him to come home and put an end to this madness. The party raged into the early morning hours. Beer cans and red solo cups littered the floor. Someone had vomited on the new rug in the den. When I threatened to call the cops, Carter just laughed coldly. Go ahead. I'd love to see you try to explain this one to Dad. By the time the last reveler finally stumbled out, dawn was breaking. I collapsed on the couch, utterly drained and dreading the inevitable fallout when Dean returned. Sure enough, he was blindsided the second he walked through the door. What the hell happened here? He roared upon seeing the trash state of our home. Carter was waiting with a wry grin. Sorry, Dad. Tried to keep things under control, but Jenna's party got way out of hand. She must have invited half the neighborhood over. My jaw dropped at the outrageous lie. That's not true at all. He threw this stupid. Dean held up a hand, his eyes blazing with anger. I don't want to hear any more excuses, Jenna. Just go clean up this mess while I figure out how to pay for the damages. As I fought back furious tears, picking up shards of broken glass and overturned furniture, I knew Carter had finally crossed a line. This was war, and I was done playing nice. In the days following the disastrous party, I reached my breaking point. Carter's snide comments and underhanded tactics had gone too far. It was time to fight fire with fire. While Dean was at work, I discreetly set up hidden cameras throughout the house, in the living room, kitchen, even Carter's bedroom. If he wanted to play dirty, I'd make sure to catch every crooked move on film. Carter must have sensed the shifting dynamic, because he started actively trying to get under my skin at every opportunity. Dirty dishes were left out with mocking notes like, Thanks for cleaning up after me, stepmommy. He'd barge into rooms and fart obnoxiously before winking at me. Childish pranks, but clearly designed to provoke a reaction. The final straw came when I discovered my favorite potted plant had been unceremoniously dumped over, soil littering the carpet. As I knelt to scoop up the mess, Carter strutted by. You really should be more careful, he tsked. Wouldn't want Dad thinking you've let the place go. White-hot fury blazed within me, but I refused to take the bait this time. You're right, Carter. I'll be sure to show your father just how careless I've been. His cocky grin faltered slightly at my uncharacteristic calm. For once, I wasn't playing the flustered victim. Over the next few weeks, I diligently cataloged Carter's escalating misbehavior via the hidden cameras. There were the obvious things. Him smugly admitting to the plant incident, 
emptying my bathroom cabinets onto the floor, even rifling through my underwear drawer and pocketing a lacy pair of panties with a depraved cackle. But there were also more subtle slights captured. Him purposefully breaking a vase and staging the shards to frame me, or scuffing up the walls near my bedroom before telling Dean he saw me carelessly knocking into them with boxes. My rage simmered, but I remained outwardly unperturbed, quietly letting Carter dig himself deeper and deeper into a hole of his own making. Dean noticed the change and occasionally commented on how I seemed calmer about the whole situation. Little did he know, the cameras were rolling, documenting every piece of incriminating proof. At last, it was time to bring Carter's reprehensible behavior into the light. With the damning video evidence compiled, I began eagerly awaiting the right moment to utterly shatter his fake image of the innocent, put-upon son. A deliciously devious smile crossed my lips as I imagined the look of shock and horror on Carter's sneering face when I revealed just how thoroughly I'd outmaneuvered him. Revenge would be sweet. I decided to strike at our next family dinner, when Dean's parents, Bonnie and Roy, would also be present. As we gathered around the table, Carter was already working his magic, charming his grandparents with that fake smile he reserved for relatives. "'College agrees with you, Carter,' Bonnie remarked proudly, so mature and responsible. Carter flashed me a sly look as he replied, "'I sure have had to grow up fast, Graham, especially dealing with certain household situations.' Dean's brow furrowed. What's that supposed to mean? Before Carter could respond, I cleared my throat loudly. Actually, I'm glad you all are here. There's something I need to address. I turned to my dumbfounded husband. Dean, I've spent months trying my best to keep the peace, to not rock the boat with Carter's behavior. I shot Carter a pointed glare and he paled slightly. But enough is enough. The disrespect, the deliberate cruelty and mind games, it stops tonight. My heart raced as I prepared to unveil my carefully assembled proof. Carter squirmed in his seat. Listen, whatever she's about to say, shut up, I snapped, a firm edge in my voice that hung in the air. Carter's eyes went wide, rendered speechless for once. Pulling out my phone, I queued up the first video clip and turned it towards Dean and his parents. It showed Carter gleefully vandalizing my plant, grinning wickedly at the camera. A collective gasp went around the table. That's... That's not what it looks like, Carter sputtered weakly. But I was just getting started. One by one, I played the videos. Carter purposefully trying to get me in trouble with staged incidents, his crude violation of my privacy, even outright admitting to the party that had caused so much strife. With each new piece of evidence, my stepson's eyes darted around desperately until he was finally rendered mute, unable to talk his way out of this. Dean's face was pale, his expression one of utter disbelief and horror as he watched his only child's true nature be laid bare. Even Bonnie and Roy were dumbstruck by the events unfolding before them. When the finale video played, a montage of Carter's most vile verbal insults and threats directed at me, a deafening silence hung over the table. I looked each of them squarely in the eyes before finally meeting Carter's pathetic, trembling gaze. So, I stated flatly, any other questions about my behavior? The silence that followed was excruciating. Carter shifted uncomfortably, his mouth opening and closing like a gasping fish. Dean stared at his son, utterly shell-shocked, while Bonnie and Roy bore matching expressions of horrified disbelief. Finally, Dean found his voice, the words coming out in a trembling rasp. Carter, what? How could you? Carter licked his lips nervously and tried to force a chuckle. Come on, Dad. You know how good I am with computers. That footage is obviously faked. Don't you dare try to lie anymore. I exploded, slamming my fist on the table. We've all seen the truth with our own eyes. Is it true, Carter? Bonnie's voice was tight with unshed tears. Did you really do those horrible things to Jenna? For a long moment, Carter avoided her piercing gaze. Then, almost inaudibly, he muttered, So what if I did? The smug defiance in his tone lit a fire in Dean's eyes. He shot up from his chair, the legs screeching against the floor. That's enough. I will not have you disrespecting my wife any longer with your twisted games. Carter recoiled from the booming force of his father's voice. In all the years I'd known them, I'd never seen Dean raise his voice like that towards his son. The alpha male persona was chilling. But, Dad, you have to listen. No, you listen. 
Dean stabbed a finger towards Carter's face, his jaw clenching with barely restrained rage. I don't know what I did to make you resent Jenna so much, to treat her so atrociously. But I can promise you, those days of disrespect under my roof are over. Carter opened his mouth to protest, but Dean barreled forward. In fact, I think it's time you experience the real world without Mommy and Daddy's support. Starting tonight, you're going to find your own place to live and get a job to pay your bills. Maybe taking some personal responsibility will straighten you out. The spoiled brat's face twisted into an ugly snarl. You're choosing her over your own flesh and blood? Some great father you are! Almost instantly, Bonnie fixed Carter with a withering look. Don't you dare speak to your father that way after what we just saw. He's right. It's long past time you faced some consequences for your actions. The certainty in her tone, mirrored by Roy's solemn nod, seemed to drain the last of Carter's bravado. He cast one final venomous glare at me before storming out of the dining room, footsteps pounding up the stairs. As the tension finally broke, I sagged back in my chair, suddenly feeling every ounce of the burden I'd been carrying for months. Dean pulled me into a tight embrace, his own eyes brimming with unshed tears. "'I'm so sorry, Jenna,' he whispered into my hair. "'Sorry I didn't see the truth sooner, but I promise you, no more games, no more toxicity. It's time Carter faced reality.' After all the anguish and anger, an immense sense of relief washed over me. Finally, no more torment, no more lies corrupting my marriage. For the first time in a long while, I felt like I could breathe again. In the aftermath of that explosive dinner, Carter wasted no time moving out of the house. Dean stood firm, refusing to enable his son's entitled behavior any longer. A tense silence lingered between them as Carter packed up his belongings. "'You'll regret this,' Carter spat viciously at me before storming out the door with his bags. "'Just you wait.' But his threats rang hollow now. Dean and I had already weathered the worst of Carter's tantrums. With the dark truth exposed, his hold over us was broken." The first few months apart were admittedly rough. Carter stubbornly tried to make it on his own, too proud to admit failure and ask for help. Dean received terse messages about dead-end jobs and dingy apartments. I could tell it pained him to watch his son struggle. Roy and Bonnie remained ambivalent, their loyalty torn between siding with their grandson and acknowledging the wake-up call he so clearly needed. Our weekly family dinners were strained affairs with Carter conspicuously absent. Slowly but surely, however, Carter's defiant exterior began to crack as the challenges of self-reliance took their toll. He finally swallowed what was left of his pride and re-enrolled in community college, realizing the value of completing his degree. One night, Dean and I were curled up watching a movie when his phone buzzed. He frowned at the caller ID but answered tentatively. Hello, Carter? What's... I watched Dean's expression morph from concern to stunned disbelief as Carter's voice crackled through the line. After a long pause, the faintest hint of a smile played across his lips. When he finally ended the call, Dean turned to me with an almost giddy look. Carter? He apologized. He says living alone has been humbling, made him realize how good he really had it. My own jaw dropped as Dean continued. He asked if he could come by soon to apologize in person and get a fresh start. Though part of me still harbored resentment over Carter's cruelty, I could only nod numbly and pull Dean into a fierce hug. In that moment, I allowed myself to feel a sliver of hope that our family could finally heal. True to his word, Carter sheepishly appeared on our doorstep a week later, his cockiness replaced by a haggard vulnerability. As he struggled to meet my gaze, I could see the arrogant, selfish boy had been replaced by someone raw, more aware of life's difficulties. Jenna. I don't expect you to forgive me overnight, he began haltingly. But I want you to know, from the bottom of my heart, how sorry I am for everything I put you through. The way I acted, it was inexcusable. Carter's eyes shone with the first hints of genuine remorse I'd ever witnessed. If you're willing, I'd like us to start over. To have a real relationship, built on mutual understanding and respect. Because at the end of the day... He paused, choking up. You're the only mother I've got. In that moment, something deep inside me unlocked. The resentment, the fury, the urge to make him pay, it all melted away to be replaced by the faintest ember of empathy. Raising a hand to Carter's cheek, I simply nodded. 
Moving forward would be a long, arduous journey, but at last, I felt like we had a chance to forge the family I'd always dreamed of. One of love, trust, and shed of Carter's poisonous influence once and for all. 